Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Don't Sleep on the Couch Podcast. I go by Cash, aka Exec P. This is episode 206. This week, another indie artist spotlight. I Am God and Clipto just released a dope ass project called Bloodstained Suede, and I want y'all to hear all about it. But here's the thing if you're a first time listener, this is typically not how I Don't Sleep on the Couch Podcast operates. But like with all things, there were technical difficulties. But I was able to get it done and and get the video out for these good brothers because they deserve a great interview to be showcased so that you guys can kind of see what they're into and their mindset into making their project. So this is not typically our norm. So if you're first time watcher, listener, you know what I mean, then rock out with it and, um, you know, and check some of our past stuff because you'll see exactly what we do. Nothing wrong with how we have it right now, but just a little bit different. And if you're returning uh, watcher and subscriber, then you guys already know what we do and the quality that we we put out there. So without further ado, we're going to dive right into the episode. And, you know, here it is, man. Blessed ain't sway. I am God and clip though. Oh, man. Uh, it feel good. It feel good. You know, it's, it's been a little more than a year since uh, me and the Black Depths dropped Murder Castle. You know what I'm saying? I would have liked to drop this one earlier, but, you know, just real regular life shit. You know what I'm saying? But I'm happy that we got it. We got it out when we got it out, and I'm happy that it came out the way that it came out. And you know, I was going back and forth in my mind too, and so I had to like look up the definition of EP and LP. So it's eight joints, but it's a it's a it's, it'll be considered a long play. Uh, I think EP is like it's like a time limit on the EP. It got to be under like thirty minutes or something like that. Like yeah. four or five tracks, thirty minutes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This is like thirty, what, 35, 37, yeah, something like that. Clock, I counted clocking in at what, 33, 34, something like that. Yeah, okay. So yeah, okay. it's it's definitely uh long play. It's short. It's short in, uh as far as the amount of joints, but I definitely wanted to uh I definitely wanted to play like an album, even though it's only eight joints. For sure, for sure. We get we'll get into that. What's that? The album is packed. The album is packed. So we, you know, it's it's, it's good, man. It's, it's it's a nice uh, it's a nice flow to the project. You got somewhere you want to go or something, you put that in the whip and just boom. And then by the time you get there, the joint will probably be done. You know what I mean? Then you get to you get that full sack. It, it ain't too long. It's not too lengthy. I think it's just right. You know what I mean? Because it is eight joints. So you're already gonna get the people with a shorter attention span. They're gonna be like. Oh, it's only eight joints. Okay, let's play it then. And then they don't know that it actually is going to be like three verses sometimes. And you know what I mean? So when you hear the joint, it's like, oh man. And then once you hear it, you don't want to put it, you don't want to put it down. So you're going to let that shit ride out. You know what I mean? So like, it's good. I think it's perfect. Perfect line. A lot, a lot of flexibility, a lot of flexibility in, in that approach as well. You know what I mean? Being able to add some musicality to it, being able to add some some longer um audio clips towards the end of some of the songs to add for effect and really make it more like a, a, a you know like a film but audio audio mm-hmm. film you know what i mean so yeah, i think yeah. you guys accomplished um some of that and i'll definitely you talk about a ride and i'll kind of get into that i think i forgot what song it was i think it's um dialogue of men you know before we do the formal introductions and all that like that my story is i'm on a road trip i'm going to south carolina got ample time to listen to it I'm I'm listening to it, so I'm like, all right, cool. This is a really, you know, great, great track. You know what I mean? And, and, you know, you're talking what you're talking about, a lot of grown man shit. And then I'm thinking that it's about to end after the the talking, after the first one. And then that, that yeah, that shit, that shit kick, kicked in, man. That stink face, the the beat switch, man. Yeah, all, all that was happening, you know, while I'm I was tired of driving five and a half hours. But <laughs> y'all, y'all got me through that South Carolina trip. So, um, yeah, listen to it a lot on, on the road back and forth. So job well done, fellas. You know what I mean? But like I said, let's get some formalities out the way. I know, uh, you know, I've got a lot of people know you that have watched the show and stuff like that. But just for people who don't know, if you guys can briefly introduce yourselves, where you're from, how long you've been doing this music thing, and then we'll kind of carry on from there. All right, so for those unfamiliar, I am God. I am getting ahead without devolving G-A-W-D. Um, you know, uh, Chicago MC, self-proclaimed underground MC. Been at this shit for many moons, many moons. Uh, Bloodstained Sway, out now, produced entirely by Clip, though. Dropped uh, May 26th. It's on Bandcamp right now. It'll be streaming 
probably in a, in a in a few a couple to a few weeks. Um, but yeah, man, like we in here, in Chicago. Never forget how to rap. I'm here to prove that time and time again. Every time I pop up and pop out. All right, Clipto's on you. Yeah, peace. Yeah, my name is Clipto. Uh, my Instagram is at Clipto Beats. That's uh with a Z at the end. Um, yeah, I've been doing this shit for probably like I don't know, like ten years strong. You know, I got my first placement in 2015. So, um, but yeah, I've been making underground beats for for quite a while. Um, work with a lot of underground heads, a lot of dope MCs. Um, you know, Bloodstained Suede is out now. Make sure y'all go and cop that, man. If you ain't copping it, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> facts. Big, Big show, facts. Big show. Oh, so, you know, I'm always interested in the approach uh, and the release. Um, you know, C- Clipto, if you don't know, God, I'm sure you know, um, I do music too as well. You know what I mean? So the, the, the decision to put it out on Bandcamp is a big one because everybody wants the, the music right away. They want it in their favorite DSP. Um, you know, between you guys, what made you guys take that leap of faith to to test that that market to see the difference uh, this time around? Other than the fact that we didn't do any promo for it, we just kind of dropped it out the blue. We didn't have a pre order going, or we didn't have physicals. You know what I'm saying on hand. So I was kind of you know what I'm saying on some experimental shit with it. And I know people, certain people will say, well, you know, like don't experiment with your shit. You know, you should put your all into it. You know what I'm saying? You should give it its full attention and your full effort. And I definitely understand that. And, you know, I I definitely believe in that. But it's like this time around, I just wanted to like test the waters and see what the reach would be if I just popped about the blue with a project with music. Like, yeah, here you go. So, you know what I'm saying? The response has been good. Um, But yeah, like we always do a band camp release initially. And then weeks following, a few weeks to a month, we had throw it on um, on streaming after the fact. But the reception been good though. So okay, uh, yeah. Clipto, was this your first time doing the band camp, straight to band camp thing, or is this kind of something like something you do normally as far as the releases? Well, I mean, if I'm doing a collab album with with another artist, oh, okay. Um, yeah, if I'm doing a, a, a collab with, with another artist, then we usually will put it on Bandcamp first um, and let it do what it does. Like if, if me and Preem are, um, you know, dropping a the joint, then, you know what I mean, we'll, we'll put it on his Bandcamp. We'll, we'll see what it does. You know, um, when I dropped my Loop album in 2018, I put it directly on Bandcamp. I was kind of new, you know, kind of a new artist at that time. But, um, and I think it got slept on because I was a little new, you know, um, but I think it's good because then, you know, you get to see like who, who really fucks with you, you know what I mean? Like you get to see like who really rocks with you, like genuinely, like they're going to spend money with you. Um, they believe in you and, and they want to invest in what you're doing. And I think it's very important because if you didn't do that, then you may not know, you know what I mean? You may not know who's really rocking with you like that. So at least, you know, like, okay, if it's, this many people that rock with you, there's this many people that rock with you. Cool. Now I know I got these people. Now let's focus on branching out and getting more people. How can I help? How can I build my brand even more? You know, so um, it's, it's a good thing putting it on, on Bandcamp first rather than the DSPs. Okay. So I, I know you guys have either, y- y'all worked together before because what I saw on uh, Tessera with JR's project, I think that's the first time I heard you on crypto um, production if i'm not mistaken so did that that spark the interest in you to want to work with him and vice versa um i think or was it something wanna, before that no nah, we didn't well mm, I'll, I'll put it like this um uh, we did i didn't i didn't know of I ain't gonna say I didn't know of Clip though. We had never had a, I don't think we had a conversation yet when I did the joint with JR. Shout out to JR. Um, that was JR, me, Black Chidori, JR Writer, and I think somebody else was on that joint. Um, I can't remember. But yeah, like, I think that was uh, Clip though on the on joint. That was, you did that uh, beat, right, bro? Yeah, that was the. Like, um, Ragnarok and, and joint. Bl- and- Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so on, yeah, on uh, Black's yacht, album, Black's yeah, I think album. I called it Yacht Thoughts. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, right, right. 
slower kind of beat, like a melodic slow type joint. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. And that's actually y'all. And I believe that was the first time that I actually heard I Am God because JR was like, yo, do you know who I Am God is? I'm going to get him on this joint. And I was like, no, I don't. And then I went and looked and I seen the video. I don't know what video it was, but he sent me a video. And then I listened to it. I was like, oh, shit, son is nice. All right, bet. So, um, but then after that, then it was um, uh, me and Waters album you hopped on. And then I was like, yo, you doing a double time flow. Like, yo, my nigga's crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I was like, all right. Man. Like, and then that's what I think I reached out. It was like, yo, you know, let's let's build on something. You know what I mean? Um, I think it would be, uh, I think you would shine over my production, you know? And, and that's what I like. I like to, uh, I like when I, when I think that, oh man, you really going to shine on my production. You know, when you get that, that spark, and that's what mm-hmm. I got. I was like, oh, we could do some damage. You know what I mean? Facts. Because I think that's the first time I heard uh, Clipto Production is on, on uh, y'all did a project, you and Water. Y'all did a project before the one that I got a chance to be on. Um, it wasn't the Honorable. The Honorable is how I got on Water. But what's the first uh, joint you did with, with Water? Uh, the first album with? was uh, For the Streets and Scholars Volume 2. Okay, so you're on, to be it, you're on for the Streets and Scholars right, Volume right. 3. Because even right. in your verse, you're like, it's Volume 3, you bitch. Right, yeah. yeah. So I think I heard them first on, uh, and you produced that one in its entirety, right? Volume 2? Correct. Volume 2 and Volume okay. 3. Okay, bet. So yeah, that's the that's the first time I heard Clipto Beats on uh, Water, with the homie Water. Shout out to homie Water. So for the Streets and Scholars Volume 2. And I'm like, damn, like the vibes he was giving him, I'm like, this that funky throwback groovy ass shit right here like i wonder and i was thinking to myself you know i wonder what i would come with to that type of shit because i mean if you've been following i am god since i came back 2020 like this is a a branch out as far as like the type of soundscapes that you know what i'm saying i'm working um spitting over so this was actually a, a challenge for me you know like i struggled with clipto production early on in the uh writing process of this project and it wasn't because i wasn't feeling the joints like he was sending nothing but fire but it's like was it pressure to live up to what he nah, was giving you like as far as the production or is it what was it it was just the fact that not having rap to because you know i'm a certain i gotta you know i'm i'm comfortable over a certain bpm i could rap to anything but at a certain bpm i really get in my bag and i'm, I'm on my shit it's more so of the I call it the cool G rap, big pun type flow to where it's very little wrong. It ain't necessarily a double time, even though I could do that too. It ain't a double time, but it's very little room for like breaths and spaces. It's a rapid fire flow. Like I feel like I shine or I go my hardest over that type shit. So high BPM shit, I think I think that's like 80 something BPM maybe, but it's like- Yeah, about over 85-ish. Yeah, yeah. so, but his joints was a, and plus just the feel of those type of beats. like. All my shit has been, it's been some gloss here and there, but it's been mostly grimy, boom, bap, hard shit, you know, and he was giving me a lot of smooth and laid back shit. And I'm not, I don't consider myself a smooth laid back MC. I can, you know, but for the most part, like I'm aggressive. I feel like you feel my hunger. You hear my hunger. Like I make you, I try to make you feel what I'm saying. So the shit he was sending me is like everything was hitting, but I'm like, I hadn't, it's, it's like it's like conditioning yourself. I felt like I was coming out of one sport going into another sport. Baseball conditioning ain't basketball conditioning. Basketball conditioning ain't football conditioning. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like I had to get out of one and get into the other and condition myself to be at my best. Like I could have wrote anything and I think it would have been cool, but I ain't good with cool. You know what I'm saying? I need to be at my peak every time I, I pop out. So it took me a little minute, you know what I'm saying? But once I finally hit my stride, I'm like, oh, okay, you know, it's, it's, it's coming back. You know what I'm saying? Because like I said, with everything being hard and grimy, you know, it was it was, it was was a little challenge for me. But I like challenges like that. Like I, I like shit that's going to make me elevate, you know what I'm saying? Or make me approach things in a different way. I don't want to be too robotic. I don't want you to feel like you know what you're going to get every time you hear I am God. So... I, I pleasantly surprised myself, you know, like I, I felt like I knew that it was going to be something wrong. I, I ain't going to allow myself to put out no, 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 no trash and no shit like that. But 
It was just me. We like, can tell as you as you said it a lot on the album. You, said, you know what I mean? Five out. <laughs> I just had to let motherfuckers know because it's hey. for, for everybody who tapped in. I feel like I'm still tremendously slept on, and I ain't gonna lie, that should be irritating. I try not to like pound my chest and really? yell to hey, the moon. But, really? Yeah, I okay. definitely feel like that's, in, that's interesting. That's interesting. You know what Absolutely. I'm saying? Because. That's interesting because I like it. it's, it's a lot of other people that uh you no know, no disrespect to where certain people are. I'll put it on myself, right? I'll put it on myself, for example. I'm not I don't have nearly the the fanship you got, but I feel like you're you get the love. You know what I mean? So it's like I guess when you at certain levels and then you get to the next level, you get to the next, you know, you, but you always gotta understand feel that where way. I'm coming from. Like I and and that's not a slight to nobody who fuck with my shit, nobody who share my shit. That's not a slight to them at all. Like those that I feel like I'm I'm in a situation or on the level of those that know, know. But it's like when I say I'm slept on, like I honestly in my heart of hearts feel like I could potentially be the best rapper out this shit. You know what I'm saying? But beside that aside, my name don't get mentioned and maybe it's a popularity thing. My name and I really don't expect my name to get mentioned, but I feel like. I know I've put in my 20,000 hours. I know I've been doing this shit since 12 years old, and I know how old I am now. Like, I know the blood, sweat, and tears, and the long nights, and the dedication I put into this, and I know, you know what I'm saying, what I can do and what I'm capable of and what I've put out. It's like I don't hear my names mentioned among certain other names, but I think when it comes to that shit, it's like popularity. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not as popping as the other names that I feel like my name should come up in discussions with. But it's like, I know I'm just as nice, if not fucking niggas up. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, I don't hard. It sound like you got something to say, Clip. You sound like you got got something to say. say. I got a lot to say. say, I got got a lot to say about this subject myself. Because he's absolutely correct. He's absolutely correct. And I've been telling folks, oh, because he's not from a borough? Because he's not from NY? Is that why? That he not getting the love? That's why I said we're gonna give we're gonna give pocket that album. Watch. And when you give pocket an album, I already had cats in there was like, yo, you know, he one of my favorites. He next to like Mickey Diamond and shout out my man Mickey Diamond. He like he like Mickey Diamond. I was like, yes, he's up there with these cats, man, but he's not from a borough. You know what I'm saying? You might not have heard his name a lot, but he's nice. You gotta give him his just due. We got we got the score from Food Sick Inc. It was a 3.75. He only rates stuff out of five. You know what I'm saying? And he rated us a 3.75. And I ain't seen much rap albums get higher than that on Food Sick Inc. And he's real, real critical of albums. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I, I, and that's why I said, when I take myself out of the equation and I just listen to the album, like, I didn't have nothing to do with it. This is probably one of the illest albums I done freaking heard all year. You know what I'm saying? So, I. It, it don't matter. It don't matter. We gonna keep. We gonna keep hitting them. Even the stuff we got in the stash, that's like not officially all the way done yet, is crazy. So like, and that's why I said I think like people were like so like uh, had a, had had some type of way feeling about Freddie Gibbs when Freddie Gibbs was um was rapping and was it was doing stuff with Jeezy right, but he didn't really get on on and get like really the people paying attention to him. Until he so dropped that joint, that, that, pin, that pinata with, met, with Mad Lib, Dog the Mad Lib, yep, yeah. Yep. So it's, a, it's the one producer thing, yep. And yep. that's what, but that's what showcased his versatility. That showcase, he ain't a one trick pony. He could spaz on anything, and when he spazzes on those beats, you're like, ooh, I got a treat. You know what I'm saying? But that's why yeah. I knew, I knew. That's why I'm like, yo. He gonna spaz on this, you know what I'm saying? It may take a while for people to catch on, just cause his name is a little bit new. But once we give it to Paco with thirty eight thousand or seventy two thousand followers and put that whole album on there, he gonna get that recognition. Facts, facts. And then my my other thing with it was like you uh, kind of going back to the double time flow and shit like that. Like if if people felt like that was the first time that you did that, obviously they probably don't listen to Dang, what listen. you've done, you know, yeah. in the past. And then number two, he's from fucking Chicago. Like, why would he not be able to do that? You know yeah. what I mean? Like, is the lineage is strong in terms of that style and that pocket of rap. So why wouldn't he be able to do that? So I heard that a lot. But going back to the like the being slept on, like I like I mentally like I know I work hard with the podcast and all that shit. How do you just blank that? I have to blank that shit out. Like I don't the popularity contest, all that shit. I just literally have to be like, fuck it. You know what I mean? I know. 
motherfuckers don't care about mixing. I know motherfuckers don't care about that. They don't care about a lot, and they, you know, they shine. And right. I can't, I never will hate on that. You know what I mean? Because the game is based on relationships, and I, and I know it. Right. You know what I mean? And if I don't want to play them games and be friends with you because I'm I'm trying to get something, I'm not trying to get something out of people. You know what I mean? Right. And, and some people are quite frankly, I probably wouldn't fuck with ever. You know what I mean? So I don't necessarily need to play those games. So it's the road less travel, man. You know what I Big mean? Facts. But you know, it, it is what it is, man. And um, you know, a lot of the times, you know, I'm just comfortable with that. I'm comfortable with taking the long route instead of you know. You gotta be because when I came route. back into this shit in like 2019, 2020, or whatever, like it's you know, it's a lot of uh personal maturation, like a lot of maturing and growth and development, you know what I'm saying? And just getting wiser with time and having a, a clearer understanding and being more knowledgeable about certain shit. Um, I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to say that like I'm super bothered by it. Like it's a thought because I'm a competitor. I'm a competitor with this rap shit. Like I just don't really talk like that. Like I leave it, like how they say, leave it in between the lines, leave it on the field, leave it on the court. I leave that shit in a booth. Like I don't walk around talking, like saying out my mouth, I'm the best rapper alive. Or I feel like I'm one of the best or blah, blah, blah. I don't, I really don't feel the need to, you know what I'm saying? So I'll leave that shit in the booth, but deep down inside, like that shit burned me a little bit just because I know how long I've been doing this shit and I know what I put into it. But I have a, a clearer understanding of how shit work. And I would have never came back into this shit in 2019 if I felt like that it was supposed to happen quick and motherfuckers was just supposed to take off. Like I would have never came back if I felt like that because I knew it wasn't going to be like that. You know what I'm saying? Like I set myself back by trying to quit for them little two years that I tried to quit. So it was like, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like it just it is what it is. But as a competitor and knowing my worth and knowing my value and how I give up when I put out a project, it's like I know I deserve to be mentioned with niggas. But I just feel like it's, it's the popularity shit and not popularity in a negative sense. It's just the fact that I haven't put in the work to be seen amongst them yet. Like I still got a lot more to do. Like I'm only five projects in. That ain't shit. Like niggas be damn near dropping five projects in a year these days. You know, I got five over three. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I understand I still got a lot more fucking work to do, but I just know like at any given time when the lights come on and I decide to drop some shit, like I know what I'm putting into my shit. Like I know what the output that I'm giving, you know, and I got, I feel like me and a producer homies that I didn't collab with, we got five very strong fucking entries into my discography. You know what I'm saying? And the boss is always going to be there. The art is always going to be there. The creativity is always going to be there. You know, so it's kind of like, I feel it there now and then, but I want to make clear that I don't like, I'm not bitter or I'm not letting that shit, like it don't really fuck with me, fuck with me like that. But every now and then I get bothered by shit. Yeah. And I, and I think, I think I could, I could, I could attest to the same thing, man. It's like, you know, um, We've been doing this shit so long, and I'm one of the new. I call myself one of the new originators of this loop sound. My album's called The Loop. My album was gonna be called The Loop since 2017. I've been looping beats, making loop beats since 2013. But I'm gonna tell you, I don't get the credit that I deserve. Everybody else does. Everybody else does. There's names that that are out there, and they get the credit. And they started the same time I started, and you could see them giving comments on my beats, like, yo, this is crazy, whatever, whatever. And now they up here, and I'm still kind of right here. And it's because it's because it's it's a I'll just say it, it's a meat eating contest. You know what I'm saying? That's that's what it is, man. And if and if and if I had those high caliber names attached to my name. That, that these cats is working with, then, then yeah, I would be up there with them. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but it's a meat-eating contest at the end of the day, man. Me and my man Prima spoke about this stuff too, you know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, does it bother me? Yes, but at the end of the day, I'm not, I'm not in this for other than to make great quality music with who I generally fuck with. So that's what yeah, it is. It means more. Know. It means more. It means yeah. much more when, when you get it with people that you actually rock with. And, and they're going to come on board eventually. You know what I mean? Specifically right. because you're in a different pocket in, in this project. Oh, I didn't know he could do this. Somebody else that may have more, you know, uh, accreditation. Well, maybe that's not the word I'm looking for as a producer. They may try to come holler at you 
You know what I mean? And then they may throw something at you, God, that you don't necessarily rock with. You know what I mean? So, I, you know, the names don't always equate to just, you know, uh, a beautiful cohesion as far as the music coming together. So, mm. you know, these names. But one of one of them examples, though, as far as when I thought you you hit a different um, pocket was 87 Miami Vice. So we're going to uh, play that with the with the talented Micah Estelle. Shout out and to uh, we'll play a verse off of that. I'm out to be the illest as being in contention just ain't enough for me. I vow to always come with it, just put your trust in me. Banger after banger, I'm no stranger to police custody. Lived in shady conditions, it's time that I go seek luxury. Uh, fuck with me, who could? Flow in elite company, bitch, I'm too good. Just trying to stay sucker free, as you should. Huh? I was gifted this inhuman curse by the universe. View the worst through the verse. Flow moving mountains, I'm moving merch. Kill your favorite MC and include the hearse. Looking for the next legend, listen, I can improve your search. Niggas blind to the grind and be trying to reduce your worth. Life can be unkind to the mind. I'm designed to get through the hurt. I was trying to get you to work. I know it's a drought. Niggas swear that they chasing a bag, but I know it's the clout. It's wicked in this present day and time. Even the sun say y'all shine. Spit your favorite rhymes. Hopped in this game and made it mine. No bars off, no goofy gimmicks, no wasted lines. You out for millions, you can't be building with basic minds. Packing pavilions from floor to ceiling, the game will grind. Pay no mind of niggas, but never ignore the fatal signs. Sweet baby Jesus, these niggas sweet as potato pies. We're paying ties, they'll cleanse your soul if you taking lives. It's like the scene in The Godfather when Fredo dies. When I tell you I'm the best in this shit, I say no lies. Business, but I feel like in my honor, 87 they still Miami Vice featuring Micah Estelle. Yes, yeah, so. Clipto on Clipto on Productions. My bad, man. So yeah, uh, yeah, man. How, that's that's the example. I think the perfect example you were talking about with the cool shit and kind of just staying in pocket. Just, you know, just taking the edge off the the aggression. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, Clip. My 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 question to you, man, is. Uh, were were the beats that you were sending just like man? I know he would he would sound great over this if he if he works on it or was it just like a you were you trying to challenge him in certain um, in certain aspects? Well, I wouldn't say challenge. I would say channel. I'm trying to channel him and uh, seeing like what what he would sound good on and going in going in with the mindset of yo I'm cooking for I am God right now. You know what I mean? So. Um, and I think that was that was a that was a good approach. I think that's the that's why I'll call myself a producer because that's like a producer type thing when you're doing things like that. That's like a producer type thing to do that. Yeah, and I think uh, and God, you can speak for yourself. I'll say it as, as an artist too. You know what I mean? That's what I'm looking for in a producer. I'm not looking for you just to send me a beat and then you know you not tell me yo you that 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 line right there. Maybe if you just take the words out of that and just say it this way or like you know what i mean that's what i'm looking for i'm not looking to just be working in a vacuum by myself like if this is a joint project let's let's put your stank on it too you know what i mean what, what do you feel what are you doing was was that uh kind of how you guys were flowing throughout the the project once you got in a good groove yeah i remember I mean, him sending me stuff too like yo how does it sound over on this beat you know would you rather have it on this beat or you know what i mean so i think we were like Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. It's like, like that joint in particular, that 87 Miami Vice, like that shit just took me into like a whole nother like bag. Like I appreciate shit like that out of a producer because you have to be tapped in to um, hear certain motherfuckers over certain shit. So for him to have the confidence he had in sending me that, I feel like he definitely was tapped in, you know what I'm saying? Cause I'm versatile, you know, um, I feel like I might not have showed the full arsenal yet, but over the course of, you know what I'm saying? What's the this discography continues to grow, you know what I'm saying? And expand. I feel like motherfuckers would definitely see it if they ain't seen it already, but that shit right there just put me in a different, in a different zone. I was just like some flat shit. Like I, that shit to me felt like, um, fast, life, like Nas and, and cool G, you know what I'm saying? Like that felt like some fast life type shit or something that that big might have, you know what I'm saying, hopped on. You know what I'm saying? Like it just felt like some some flash shit. And I'm like, you know what? 
I don't really do no cool shit, you know, but I'm not finna try to sound like nobody just let me do me, but over that, you know what I'm saying? And I reached out to, you know what I'm saying, a homegirl, Micah. She did what she do, you know what I'm saying? And like, I, I'm serious, like that, that, that line I put at the end, like I'm serious, like that Lauren Hill shit, you might not have heard it on this per se, but we got other shit in the can coming. And I, I tapped into her last project called uh, Fort Zion. So if anybody want to hear more of Micah Estelle, Spotify, Apple Music, title, what, title, whatever, it's called Fort Zion. And man, like not to try to like put her in that shadow, but like Lauren Hill, that's greatness. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, Cause Micah rap too, like she rap, like and she cold. So like, motherfuckers gonna hear if y'all don't hear her on her own, y'all definitely gonna hear me and her on more shit. You know what I'm saying down the line. But I, I challenge you, go listen to that for Zion by Micah Estelle. Like she get she get off, she got that old soulful cadence, and it's like, like she she got it, she got it. Like definitely check her out. But yeah, that's one of my favorite joints, that '87 Miami Vice. That shit is just some fly nigga shit. Yeah, yo, I, I gotta commend you for um, you know, I, I got a, a pet peeve of um, you know, like there, there's guys, you know, in the underground scene or just kind of in on the come up and stuff like that that do these, you know, these um, the aren't they have the R and B features and stuff like that, and it is it for the most part sometimes it just end up well, you know what I mean, as mm-hmm. far as uh, the the mix and and everything the person singing and stuff like that. And recently you were talking about, and I forget who the producer's name was, was just like kind of falling in love with the, the the mix and the process of it and the nuances and stuff like that. Is that something that you've always been into as far as wanting to be, be produced and wanting to know how certain things is panned to the left, panned to the right and all of the, the, the mix and nerd engineer stuff? Yeah, bro, because like when I say I'm an artist, I really mean I'm an artist like through and through. It ain't just with the music like. Shout out to my nigga, Dr. Mind Bender. He produced Hell's Angels and Heaven's Demons in its entirety. Like, that's my primary engineer. Like, he makes all my shit unless I'm doing a feature and I'm recording it with them. You know, but Doc makes all my shit. And it's like, that shit, like, I'm there for the whole shit. It's not like I just, I go get studio time and record and then I be out and I let him do everything when I'm not there. Like, I have, I'm not going to say I have an engineer's ear, but I feel like I have a creator's ear. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, just based off motherfuckers that I grew up on music wise, like I know how I want shit to sound. Like I feel like I have an ear, a creative ear for like putting things here, putting things there. You know what I'm saying? A beat switch here, a beat switch there, drop the beat here. You know what I'm saying? Pan this, pan that. You know what I'm saying? Like I love that shit. Like I love that process. I love being a part of that. Like I don't think I could ever be comfortable with sitting back and just being a rapper and giving somebody else my music and just not having no say so in that in that process i don't think i'll ever be comfortable with that i don't know if it'll ever be a day to i allow that to happen you know what i'm saying because it's like i've been doing it for so long like even before i came back in 2020 and gave y'all i am god like i've been that way for a very long time like even i've been putting out music on the internet since 2010. you know i just i just started becoming a little more known as i am god in 2020 you know what i'm saying but I've been doing this shit and it's like, it's always been the same. Like I, I'm just, I'm a curator as well to a certain degree. You know what I'm saying? As far as my shit, you know what I'm saying? Like I know the vibes I want to give. Like I know how I want shit to sound. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm very, very particular, like very hands-on, very particular with that. Clip, are you, are you into the mixing side of things as well? Because I know, I mean, you almost have to be, um, being a producer, uh-huh. you have to kind of be dual hatted to to mix in a certain certain degree. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you know, with me when I'm sending stuff, I I want to make sure that my levels is is right. You know, that nothing is peaking. Um, I learned this from from a from a friend of mine named um, he goes by the name of Bobby Midas, but um, we were actually uh doing a lot of um a lot of work. You know, in my early stages of kind of having placements and stuff like that. And he was telling me certain things and he was like, yo, when, when I usually mix a beat, I don't have anything going over like five, you know what I mean? I like to keep stuff mid range. And then, you know, when, when I send, when I send the stems out, when you send the stems, then they can go ahead and they can, you know, they can bring levels up and all this type of stuff. But even if like, I don't mix and master, that's not what I do, but I do have an engineer 
that I go to frequently uh, by the name of Casablanca. Um, and I go to him and he knows the way that I like my stuff to sound. Like he's even like anytime I have a project, like besides me and I am God, like, and I'm familiar with Dr. Mindbender because he works with, with water as well. So I don't have any qualms with, with his mixing. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't have any qualms with his, with his mixing. Um, uh, but a lot of engineers, they don't, they don't know what they're doing. And I think um, Casa, you know, he he knows the way I like my stuff to sound. He'll even bring the low end out of my beats. You know what I mean? He'll put like a low pass filter to bring the, you know, that that um, yep. that bassiness, in the, the bassiness beat. into it. Because sometimes yeah. if you don't have drums and you don't have certain things in there, you gotta you want that body, you know, yeah. in, in a beat. Yeah. yeah. So, so you so, know, he knows the way I like my stuff to sound. Just like just like I am God. You know what I mean? Um, we we know the way we want our stuff to sound, and if it don't sound like that, then we're not as um we're not as satisfied, you know. Right. Well, what what would y'all tell some younger younger artists that are just because I mean right now it's like man these guys get a decent mix and it's just it's out there into the world. Um, let you rock out it. What would you tell some younger artists as far as just kind of having having a care for the the quality of of their sound long term. Be patient. Don't rush that shit. Like it's gonna, it's gonna get a chance to be heard. Don't, don't rush that shit because it's niggas that's actually nice that I've heard and like the mix ain't where it should be and that make me not want to listen. That's just me person. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, don't ever rush and don't listen to motherfuckers that be like, oh, don't nobody care about the mix and the quality. Like this ain't. This ain't the beginning of this rap shit no more. This ain't the beginning of hip hop. Them days is over with. Like, Got a lot of tools whole, that you, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like the whole 80s thing to where shit was, I understand like certain sounds, but even in, in that, when you looking for that old grimy distortion shit, it's still an art to that shit. You can't just have levels all out of whack and shit and you know what I'm saying? And not have a mix and think that you recapturing something that's not really what it is. It's just like, it's just a certain sound that motherfuckers are trying to duplicate, but you don't want your shit to sound trash. Like you want to still be uh, audible. You know what I'm saying? You still want a motherfucker to be able to hear you. You know what I'm saying? Like it's like, don't, don't rush it. Don't rush it. I ain't saying like, you gotta have a pristine, like, Three hundred dollar an hour type mix, you know what I'm saying? But it's like good enough for a motherfucker to be able to hear everything and get the full experience of the music, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I feel like you can you can get that for I ain't gonna say little to nothing, but you can get that for cheaper than you once could. So just be patient with your shit. Like, take pride in your shit. That's I think it's name. very, yeah. I think it's very important. You know, the um, I didn't used to think that way. I didn't used to always make beats. I used to rap too. I wasn't I wasn't whack either. Like I was pretty nice. I just kind of lost the ego, and I and I and I fell in love more with the beats. But now I know, you know, this is not a. Um, most people listen to the to music on the go. You know what I mean? They're either in the headphones with it or they're in the car with it. And if you play something, and it's not right, it like for me. I don't know about anybody else, um, but I think I am God could attest to this it messes with you. Like it messes with your, like, like it don't sound right. And it makes you not want to hear it. Like there's something wrong with it. It's like, there's something wrong with it, you know? So I, I can't really listen to music unless it's mixed well, especially if I'm on the go in the car on the way to work. I can't listen to your album if it's not properly mixed. It's just going to mess with my ears. It's not going to sonically sound right. Facts. That's facts. Yeah, and, and that's that's where that's where I'm at too. Maybe call me old, or you know what I mean. But I mean, I, I just think that if you, it, it's almost like uh, you know, like your parents would tell you, you know what I'm saying, or, or my pops would tell me, like you know, the the way you dress and the way you present yourself speaks volumes about you and, and nice. who you are. And I think as an artist, how you present yourself. I mean, if you come with a, just a terrible mix, I mean, you you don't have to have the grand rollout. You know what I mean? A video and all that stuff. Uh, indie artists are indie artists for a reason. Um, you know, everybody has a nine to five for the most part, you know, that's doing this. So you may not have the funds, but at the very least, if you're going to invest funds in anything, it got to be from the time that they press play. <laughs> Shit got to go. You know what I mean? And if it don't, it, and like you, like you said, God, I'm, I'm probably turning it off. And, and it's a lot of dope artists out there that sound good. And I'm, I try to cut through it, but it's hard 
to keep me for an entire album when it, it just doesn't sound good. So we grew up in an era to where it's like our favorite artists come from the mainstream. So it's like, yeah, that's a whole machine. So they right, had right. a budget for the mixing. There wasn't no way in hell you was going to get a project <laughs> right, from right. your favorite artist and the mix was going to be trash. So we kind of like our ears are accustomed to hearing shit that's at least decent. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I can't listen to a motherfucker. And, and this is no disrespect because I know motherfuckers that mix out their bedroom and they still get a decent ass quality. If you know what you're doing and you got some decent enough hardware, you can, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you can get you can get a quality in mix in a box for sure. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Yeah. So it's like, no disrespect to, to, to them artists, but it's like, if you don't know what you're doing or you lazy or you don't want to spend the money or maybe you ain't got the money, whatever the case may be, it's like, give yourself time to develop. You know what I'm saying? Say that up, go grab that or go have somebody else do it for you who do got the equipment. But it's like, our ears are accustomed to hearing a certain quality. Like I didn't grow up in a internet age to where all my favorite artists was recording out their bedroom or whatever. Like these is niggas who had million dollar budgets recording in, you know what I'm saying, legendary studios. So my ears is just uh trained to hear shit at a certain quality. But you know what I'm saying? Just 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 have patience and it'll get right eventually. You know what I'm saying? Don't nothing last forever. Yeah, let's stay let's stay there with the the patience things. Um, you know, again, you don't put out a lot of music at high volume. You don't do three to four or five uh projects throughout the year and you know to each his own so i I just want to ask like why why do you take you know a lot of time with releasing music and and why did you take so much time away from it um well not so much time we say like a year so who is a lot of time but that's not really a lot of time in today but by today's standard it is you know what i mean it's it's a lot of time um you know real life got into you know what i'm saying Oh, yeah, Siri acting crazy over here. What the fuck is going on? Real life um, kind of got into the way, kind of got in the way of, you know, me releasing music this time around. Um, I would have definitely liked to release Bloodstained Sway earlier, but it wasn't ready. And I didn't really know what I wanted to do as far as what I was going to release. Like, I'll be working on a bunch of different shit all at one time and whatever fuels me at the moment is whatever i'm gonna give my um full attention to so but just real life you know what i'm saying like um transitioning from one situation to the next from one stage of life to the next you know just you know having to maintain shit like i work a whole nine to five you know what i'm saying got family and shit so it's like sometimes shit just takes higher priority than what you would rather be doing and you just got to find a way to balance it out. But, you know, like I was still creating here and there through the down periods, but I wasn't creating at a pace to where I would have liked to, you know, like I I would have loved to be like two projects in this year alone already. But, you know, it just the cars didn't, you know what I'm saying, fall like that. So it's like I really don't. Um, I'm big on not rushing shit. You know what I'm saying? Like I would like to get my vision out the way I initially dream it up. But if it don't, as long as it get done, you know what I'm saying? That's cool. But yeah, like I would have much, I would have definitely liked to be like two projects in already for 23, but you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. I feel like I get at least one more out before the year is over. And also I don't want to step on my own work. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to put out something and then only give it two months to breathe. And then next thing you know, I'm putting out something else. Like that's cool. I'm not knocking it, but it's like, I put so much effort into making my projects. I couldn't see myself giving you a project every two months. Like it's just, that's not enough time for you to digest half of what the fuck I'm giving you. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I'm old fashioned in that sense too. Like I'm, I'm all for multiple projects in a year, but I think I would cap my shit at like three and I've yet to have a year to where I'm able to release three in one year. I do want to do that. You know what I'm saying? Just like put out like three projects because I know I feel like that'd be something to where like I ain't gonna say it ain't been done because we got motherfuckers that didn't drop the project every month for a year, you know, but I feel like the type of quality that I put out, like I feel like that'd be a feat, you know what I'm saying? And something to behold because it's like every project gonna hit like I took a year, you know what I'm saying, to curate it in. Serious I am with my shit, but it's like timing is everything too. The older I get, the more I understand that like you can't you can't bet against time. Like you really not gonna win against time. Like I wish I had more time, but it just is what it is. So I just have to make it work the way I the way it's given to me. Yeah. Clip, how you how you feel about this uh, you know, that that 
that feeling that certain artists have to to rush things out. You know what I mean? How do you feel about that? Well, I, you know, as an art for an artist standpoint, looking at it as a, well, I think you look at it as an artist because because I'm an artist. I'm an artist as well. I'm a producer, but I'm an artist. Um, I I think it's a very um, slippery slope. You know, there's got to be like a happy medium um, because it, the, the way that the game is now, it's it's it is definitely quantity. It's quantity because, um, you know, people are so short attention span that and, and people are so gimme, gimme, gimme that it's like, um, OK, let me get one more. Let me get another project. Oh, I need another project. Let me get another project from you. So now you've got these artists and these on this hamster wheel and they're and they're and they're spitting out so many projects, and it's not necessarily quality. You know what I mean? You may get one or two joints on the album that you like, and then you listen to it for two weeks, and you're done with it. Not even that. You listen to it for a week, or you listen to it for a couple of days, and then you're on to the next project. You know, so that's what these artists are competing against. Is is that they feel like they have to keep pushing out these products. Um, for, for their listeners. And, and if you don't, and you take a year off, like I am God did, then that that's a chance that you may fall to the wayside. And now no one's checking for you anymore because you haven't been around for a whole year. So, um, it's not like, you know, Nas can take a year off and Nas drops an album and you're like, Oh man, I've been waiting a whole year for this Nas project. So, um, but at the same token, you know, I, I, I'm a firm believer and everything happens in divine order, you know what I mean, and in divine timing. So, if it didn't get put out then, that's great. It got put out now. My loop album was supposed to drop in 2017. I had my first uh, my first son in in 2017. So it didn't get put out until probably like five months later, and that was 2018. And I had been working on it since the end of 2016, but. You know, if I didn't put that album out in 2018, then maybe these other things that came from working on that album wouldn't have happened because maybe in 2017 they were doing other stuff. But now in 2018, they caught wind to me and now they're fans. So, I mean, everything happens in divine order. So um, I don't really stress that either. I just, you know, um, whenever things can get done, then things will get done. You know what I mean? That's it. And also to look at it from a business perspective, like I understand the business side of it too. Like if you're not touring and you're not getting paid like that, you know what I'm saying? Like them distro kid or them United masters or them tune Core, you know what I'm saying? Checks could potentially look a little decent. You know what I'm saying? If you got seven projects out and all of them is being streamed and span in the span of a, a 12 month period, and you don't have to be getting thousands of stream for, streams for each one. But if you could pull several hundred streams from each project and you got seven projects rotating, like I'm not saying that you're going to be living lavishly, but you know, that's, that's something, you know what I'm saying? So I get it from a business aspect too. And then on top of that, if you got merch going with every project, so it all depends on what kind of artist you is. I feel like it's, it's good to have a healthy balance. Like I would like to you know, do like, two projects a year, you know what I'm saying? Probably like max average, max average. I would like to give, give y'all two projects a year, but the way my shit's set up right now, is just not feasible to be able to uh, uh, maintain that year after year after year. But I understand it from a business perspective too. Shout out my guy AM early morning. Like he had to pull me to the side on some shit. Like, bro, you got it. Like you got everything. Like you got the uh, the bars, like you got the, the cadence, the delivery. And he even told me, like, I would like to see you put out shorter projects. Like, you got to play the game as it is sometimes. Like, I know you traditional. I know you a throwback MC, but sometimes you got to play the game as it is. And, you know, step out your comfort zone and you will see, you know what I'm saying, a difference. You know, and I'm like, I take heed to everything. I don't feel like I'm too big to not listen to nobody or that I've done this for too long to not listen. Like, I take a little bit from anywhere I could get it from if I feel like it'll benefit me. So, I, I feel it like you got to have a healthy balance of both. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm definitely a long play LP traditional artist type motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? At least 12 songs. But, you know, at the same time, like I do realize the attention span of most listeners these days is super short. So it's kind of like, yeah, yeah. 
a happy medium at the end of the day. Right. And I mean, I even suffer from it and I'm, I come from the era of long albums, but just listening to, with having so much music at your disposal nowadays, how do you cut through? Maybe you cut through with two verses instead of doing three. Yeah. There's a lot of people out there that appreciate three verses, but there's very few and far in between nowadays. You know what I mean? So it's just kind of like, yes. are you, are you satisfied with the end result? Are you satisfied with the end pro project? And you know what I mean? Like, and then some some people just don't you don't make the back end either. You talk about the business. Sometimes you don't make the back end on what you put into the album. But mm -hmm. if you don't, at the very least, you got to be satisfied with with what you put out. You know what I mean? Right. Because you are going to you yeah, if you anybody, you're going to try to book shows. You're going to try to perform it. You're going to try to get your music out there. So at least at the very least, you got to be proud of what you put out there. And if you took the time a year, you know what I mean? And you're not on the social media uh, standpoint that's kind of leading into what I want to say you know next you know not only did you take off a year and it was personal stuff but you know you wasn't as visible on social media why you didn't have anything else so that could also be a detriment in today's day and age you know what I mean so how did you navigate that back in in terms of just trying to like you know just be a little bit more present or will you be a little bit more present on your off time moving forward I don't know because like I I, I kind of doubt it, you know. Um, like when I first came back to social media, it was fun for like a little while, you know what I'm saying. But it's kind of like <laughs> the debates, you know what I'm saying. Like tired, they old, same media, shit, same yeah, shit. Over social and over media again, is man. like the high school lunchroom, you know what I'm saying. There's so much <laughs> shit going sure. on, niggas is throwing food over here, motherfuckers twerking over there, like motherfuckers fighting over here, they battle rapping over there, like. It's so much shit going on and it's like bro at this stage of my life it's like i'm finna like kind of like fade the black on motherfuckers like i'm not the the prototypical modern day social media content artist like my content is is strictly to do with my music or somebody music that i fuck with who i just might be trying to help push their brand you know what i'm saying so it's like i don't think that i'm gonna be that that artist that got like con social media content to hold you over until I could get you some more music. Like I, that's not really my thing. And I could eat that if that's so detrimental to my growth and it hurts me in the long run. Like I'm cool with that because that's not who I am. I don't even enjoy that. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to be in front of the camera like that all the time. Like it's just not who I am. And I'm a super private person. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I like being accessible, but at the same time, like I feel like motherfuckers, want to get want to hear from you more when you're not as accessible you know what i'm saying it ain't got nothing to do with nobody in particular it's just how i want to carry myself you know so i mean i'm 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 present now because you know what i'm saying we promoting blood stain sway but you know in between projects i'm not sure i'm gonna be so present it's just like i'm outgrowing social media for any recreational uses it just is what it is you know what i'm saying yeah Fair, fair enough, you know, and I, and I kind of, uh, you know, clip you, you, I hardly see you on social media at at all, you know what I mean? I, but I don't post no pictures on on social media, and I hardly do interviews. And I think I used to be different. I used to be an introvert and all that. I'm a I'm an introvert, you know what I mean? Yeah. So like I don't, I'm like a hermit, you know what I mean? Same. So I stay in this room. Graham, this is, he be posting his uh his beats and shit. His beats, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't post no visuals of myself or none of that. Like I'm just like, you know what I mean. I just want it, it's it's about the music. That's why I got the thing. That's why I got the Instagram. It's about the music. This is what it is. Mm -hmm. It ain't so you can see my lineup and how fresh my, you know. <laughs> yep, yep, cool. yep. What fit I got on? Yep, yep. I, I hear you. Yo, I, I'm the same way, man. The older I get, and I don't know if it's COVID that fucked me up or what, man. But like. I got all my toys in here. I got my MP. I got my, you know what I mean? I got everything I enjoy doing right here. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I do want to get out and kick it with my friends and family, but that don't even need to be on social media. I go kick it with a homie I ain't seen in 10 years. But there's no f phones out. There's nothing. There's just, right. we just kicking it and catching catching up. You know what I mean? And, and again, I'm the same way, man. If it ain't got nothing to do with my interests, I'm probably not on social media as much. If we ain't talking about hoops, football, or music, uh, you know, even then, I don't, like you said, I don't get in on the debates or anything like that. And I don't feel the pressure to anymore. I used to getting back into it. Like, yo, they don't know me for shit music wise. They don't know the podcast. I got to promote, promote, promote. But I'm like, man, 
these motherfuckers will find me how they find me, man. And it, it is and what like, it is. Everything turned into a debate these days. Like niggas be so pressed over your opinion. And I'm like, are we even people anymore? Like, like what the fuck is going on? Like niggas be so pressed over your opinion. Like they, like, I feel like you doing life wrong. If you so pressed over somebody else's opinion, you just have to make your fucking opinion known. <laughs> right. Under they comment like, right, bro, right, like, right. Why, bro? Like, I don't give a fuck what you think. Nigga. Me neither. Like, I don't have and, the time to sit there and go back yeah. and forth. For the, that's why I don't even start them. Because, number right. one, I got work to do. Like, I got a real job that demands my fucking time from the time I walk through there to the time I leave. I don't have time to, to go on a long, long debate about something as stupid as who my top five lyricists are. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Shit just like on some experimental <laughs> shit. Just like posted certain shit just to see how, how motherfuckers will respond to it. And it's like, I've seen numbers of a post to where it's like it's just bait for a debate, and like that should have do numbers, you know what I'm saying? But like I post my shit is good music, like it's it's genuine art, and motherfuckers are those that the the those that they fuck with you, yeah, fuck yeah, with yeah, it, yeah, you know what I'm saying? And then maybe some residual motherfuckers that they fuck with or come fuck with it, but it's like the numbers don't be the same, and it's like. I could, you know what I'm saying, like catch an attitude over that shit, but why? You know what I'm saying? It just is what it is. Like I I get it. You know what I'm saying? Like I understand what the social media shit is, what it's become what it has become and where it's going. But I just choose not to play that game. Like that's not the type of motherfucker I am. And a lot of motherfuckers that look at it as stupid. Like, hey, you gotta play the game to win. Cool. You know what I'm saying? But that's what that God shit is about, getting ahead without devolving. Like I have to be able to look myself in the mirror and be comfortable with the motherfucker who I see in that reflection. Like I can't just do some shit because that's the wave these days. Like I'm a 37 year old grown ass man, bro. Like I don't give a fuck about what niggas is doing. If we being a hundred percent honest, it's like, I'm trying to, you know what I'm saying? Out that don't mean I'm not paying attention and I'm not soaking up shit that I feel like is respectable, honorable, and may help me further my mission. But as far as like being on some monkey see monkey do ass shit, trying to, Follow the ride the ride a nigga wave or the follow trends. Like I'm not with it, yo, bro. Like I'm just not and, with and, it, and again, like you said, man, it's good to take notes and see, okay, I can oh, he did it that way. That's some shit I could kind of do as well and be right. me and not lose who I am. You know what I mean? So that's kind of what I'm you know doing. Like, but like yeah, the salacious uh headlines, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't I don't ask them, I don't never ask y'all nothing about another artist, you know what I mean, or anything like that to you know, it, you know, you say you better than a lot of people. I could ask who the fuck are you talking about? You know, who who right. tick, you know, I don't I don't do that because I don't care. I know it's rapper bravado. You you supposed right. to feel like you better than everybody. I'm supposed to feel like I'm better than everybody if I rap. Like that's just what the fuck you do. And you gotta right. prove it by, you know, putting out quality shit. You know what I mean? But I I don't like to leave with that because number one, I'm from the era where you gotta come outside. And talk about that eventually. Eventually, you know that's why I don't. You know I don't discuss albums or nothing like that no more. Cause you get out of pocket too much. These motherfuckers are eventually gonna see you if you blow up. And the people that say the most salacious shit blow up. But that's that's never been me. You know what I mean? So if my podcast does what it does, it does what it does. Man, I can live with myself at the end of the day. Man, I'm just not gonna. Nah, yeah, do nothing out of my character, man. So I feel I feel you on that. I feel y'all on that, man. So. Um, you know, with the the rest of this project being as good as it is, man, I wanted to play one of the uh, the last song, the last song on here called "Dog Food," which is one of my favorite ones uh, off here. Before I let you guys go, man, and then we'll wrap up with what you guys got coming up next. But I definitely want uh, some of the listeners to listen to "Dog Food," man. This is one. Of, this is how you uh, grand open and grand close it. You know what I mean? In terms of you know. <laughs> Too advanced, don't bother. I footwork on an instrumental. It's not coincidental. I finish young sinister, nigga sentimental. I ain't a killer, but try me. The outcome won't be civil. I'm more Malcolm in the window than Malcolm in the middle. I'm Martin Scorsese, meets Martin Luther the King. Doper than a hot spoon of heaven when they shoot through a fiend. A shot of adrenaline, like sniffing the purest Peruvian flake. Niggas is goofy and fake. Uh, no mediocre, no cap. I'm truly a great when it comes to rap. It's the fact that the gift is truly innate. I'm nasty, a cool genius. A rapper, cold as an ice cube. I'm quite rude. Spit vulgarities, blow a mic fuse. 
You plan to dance with the devil, throw on the right shoes. Keep your rhythm, make sure you bust on the right moves. Oh, it's your life you might lose. You thinking niggas is patting you on the back whole time, they leaving knife wounds. Frigid earth, lot of discussion about niggas that really rapping what these lyrics worth. All I know is I spit it first and it hit you spirit first. I am God, might fuck around and just spit it in reverse. Holy Ghost flow, hung around with some of the brothers, but mostly folks though. If you ain't privy to much about them, just know we dope though. Uh, I am legend and ain't too many rap niggas that you can name. I ain't better than bitch, there's no mediocre out to get it. I ain't settling only for a progression. I'm better than I have ever been. All I hear is gun bars, coattails, dope sales. If rap was the trap, nigga, you ain't getting no sales. Niggas riding coattails, hoping they could propel. No skills, couldn't fuck with the guard on no scale. Niggas mad, oh well, never fold, won't fail. Streets finish, killers that'll throw shells and go tail. Niggas locked, no bail. Luckily, I flow well. Shitting on every instrumental. This how I go smell, nigga. I am pop. Oh, shit. Let me stop. Hey, y'all gotta go buy that shit off Bandcamp. <laughs> I ain't gonna give y'all the whole guy. Yeah, try. <laughs> but uh yeah, it's bad over it. Yo <laughs> sorry, coach, man. Hey man, he talking real crazy on it, man. If if, if it don't motivate if, if you fellow MC or and y'all and y'all watched it, man, if that shit don't motivate you to go push your pit, I don't know what will, man. So uh I just want to say again, congratulations. Uh man, you you man, you gave him a, a canvas, man, to, to run wild, man. So um the credit is you guys is both, man. On uh, so thanks for being patient. Uh, you know, thanks for putting this together, putting in the time and the quality behind the scenes to, to give us something worth purchasing. You know what I mean? So um more you know, more power and blessings to y'all, man. Yes, sir. Gratitude. Yeah, people, Always yeah, gratitude. Peace to the supporters, man. Uh, you know, I'm really uh really thankful, you know, to everybody that uh that tapped into the project and that showing love, man. And I'm glad that um, you know, we was able to get you through that car ride. <laughs> yeah, 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 Because right. right. I did on, not so want to make that ride. Okay, man. Big facts. For sure, for sure, man. So uh, before I let y'all go, man, I'll ask you a producer nerd question, and then I'm um, going to let you go out with what you got coming up next, man. So, Clip, what are you producing with? What are you utilizing? What's 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 your go-to? What's your go-to right now for beat making? Yeah, um, I don't know if I'm going to get some hate or get loves like looping something together um and and, I, and i'm not really adding too much things um i'm using audacity strictly okay no you won't you won't get actually, hate. you wait i'm interested it, oh, that's like audacity well, it, peak well, my it, interest. It, it, it basically makes my process much faster what i used to do is i used to take my my chops that i would mm. chop in audacity and i'd throw them into fruity loops nah I'm just going straight in Audacity and, and running those loops back there because I figured it out how to do it in Audacity. So um, it, it quickens my process. I'm all about, you know, um, time and all that. So I don't have a lot of it. So um, the quicker I can do things, the better. So Audacity. Dope, dope, man. So, yeah, I always like to ask that question because, you know, it opens opens the eyes to people that's newly getting into production and stuff like that. Like, like myself, you know, I, I love doing that shit and figuring that shit out. But sometimes simple is better. Sometimes having less is more. You know what I mean? Um, less less process um, that you have to kind of fine tune. You know what I mean? You'll you'll figure your way out with what you got. So um, dope, dope, brother. So again, man, congrats on the on the project, man. You did a hell of a job with setting the, the soundscape. Um, God, what, what do you got coming up? Uh, and shit, this is to both of you guys. What do you guys have coming up for for the rest of the year that you can? can speak to right now i know i saw you post a single recently uh with, with one of your uh collaborators uh god yeah man um shit man i got so much in the pipeline but i ain't gonna even front blood stain sway too you know what i'm saying that's probably gonna be the next shit y'all here um just riding the momentum off of this one and going into the next shit like i feel like me and clipto was in a hell of a groove, you know what I'm saying? Like he then gave me a bunch of shit. There's still a bunch of shit that I ain't even that y'all haven't heard. You know, uh Bloodstain Suede One was a originally like gonna be another 12, 14, maybe even 16 joint project. But it was just like, you know, like let's let's get motherfuckers like let's 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 make it let's make it a, an adventure. Let's make it a journey. You know what I'm saying? Let's give them something to to look forward to. You know what I'm saying? Because I like the space we was in. I like the space I was in as far as like creating and writing. I like the space that he was in as far as the joints he was sending. You know what I'm saying? So I ain't, I ain't, I wasn't necessarily eager, you know what I'm saying, to to wrap it up and just leave it at that one. You know what I'm saying? So 
blood stain suede too. When I can't say, <laughs> you know what I'm saying for right. the, fair the, enough for the for the moment, and I'm I'm not even saying I can't say trying to be secretive. Like I just don't know, <laughs> you <laughs> know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> like y'all got eight joints of that pure uncut Peruvian flake to motherfucking sniff and and digest, and you know what I'm saying? And 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 you know just uh you know vibe to with blood stain suede one. You know what I'm saying? We ain't even got the physicals out yet, and for everybody asking, it's definitely gonna be some physicals coming. CDs gonna be on deck, vinyl gonna be on deck. You know what I'm saying? Don't even worry about that. I'm I'm steady getting acts like yes. I would never from this point moving forward. I didn't even know that I could sell vinyl when I came back to this shit. Like I didn't think nobody would want vinyl from an unknown motherfucker. But y'all definitely been supporting with that shit, so we definitely gonna give it to y'all. But it's yeah, just more music, man. Like um. I ain't, I ain't nowhere near finish. You know what I'm saying? Not Philly, yeah, not Pitt. You know what I'm saying? It's a loop. This nigga clipped though, bro, because he definitely like gave me a hell of a canvas, a hell of a soundscape to work with, you know, and do what I do best over. So salute to you, bro, because you absolutely like put your motherfucking foot, showed your ass on all these beats. You know, I ain't never afraid to give a motherfucker their credit or to say something had me under pressure. Like, the motherfucking beats he was sending like made me rethink my shit as an artist and like nah bro like nigga it's time to come with it you know what i'm saying like it's time to come with that shit like we ain't doing no fly by night no fool shit like none of that shit no goof ass shit like we gonna put our all into this shit like we always do so salute clip though because it's definitely i feel like bloodstain suede is probably my favorite project that i've done since i've been back and maybe it could be because it's new but i just feel like I don't really feel that way. And the reason being is because like, it's me in a whole different light. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody know I could do the grimy shit. I could do the boom bap shit. You know what I'm saying? I could put a little gloss on it. You know what I'm saying? I experimented and gave the R&B collabs, you know what I'm saying? On um, the Eternal Reflection, shout out Olive Blue, um, which she backed by the way for Chosen Part 2 on first yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, if you don't remember, Remember, Chosen Part One was one of my the first time we interviewed you about um, the project. That was off. That was one of my favorite records off there. So when y'all came yeah. back with the uh, the flip that they did on QB's finest or whatever, yeah. and their funny story, I did some shit like th- I did the same exact shit on Furious Styles project when I came back to rapping in twenty twenty. Yeah, facts, so, big facts. Yeah, okay. so I was big like, facts. okay, yeah, he smoked this one. You know what I mean? And he yeah. got blue on there so it took that one out of there but yeah I, I like I like y'all version for sure so that shit was instantly on there like yeah that, yeah I like that I've always yeah, loved shout that out all of blue like she 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 another one that I respect like heavily you know what I'm saying and for those that don't know I think she was a contestant on the voice season four if I'm not mistaken you know what I'm saying a few years ago a couple of years ago um but yeah like super dope you know what I'm saying super dope like I love her as a a artist, you know what I'm saying? Like she's super dope. So I definitely had to run it back with Olive, you know what I'm saying, for for that joint. And um yeah, that's definitely the sample from um the same sample that LES you to find your wealth off uh the QB's finest shit. So I had to do my one two over that shit. Another like fly nigga type joint, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, like I, I I really fuck with this project. You know what I'm saying? It's me in a different light. It's me getting back to my artistry. Um expanding you know what i'm saying the sound and and showing why i'm a force to be reckoned with in this rap shit and why i am to be respected as a complete artist because i can give you so many different looks but the music just feel good you know what i'm saying it just feel good so salute clip though because he definitely gave me something to work with for this shit so blood stain suede out on band camp it's not out everywhere band camp exclusive for the moment it'll be hitting streaming platforms probably in the coming weeks if not the end of the month definitely early uh july but i probably want to say the end of this month you know what i'm saying but yeah you know what i'm saying just appreciate everybody who've been fucking with it everybody who've been supporting god mc on all platforms g-a-w-d-e-m-c-e-e well god mc on twitter and instagram uh youtube is i backslash i am god um i don't really do the facebook too much but yeah, like, uh, okay, yeah, man, yeah, we here. For sure, Chicago for sure. never it, forgot how to rap. I think it, I don't know if this week is Bandcamp for is, is this week Bandcamp Friday? Or was it nah, the next one coming like in September or some shit, if I'm not mistaken, okay. August or September, one of the two. Yeah, ne- nevertheless, if y'all don't know what Bandcamp is, majority of the proceeds go to the artists, that's why artists are putting it on Bandcamp. So, if you you know one of these people that you have no idea what Bandcamp is, why would you go spend your money? 
Well, the artist mm-hmm. receives most of the proceeds. I want to say it's over 80 percent. I forget the uh, the number last time I checked. But uh, yeah, y'all go check it out. Just go buy it. You may not do anything with it, but you definitely support an artist put out to put out more projects to to put money to physicals and stuff like that. So um, if you want to see some of your favorite artists get up there and do their thing and, and be recognized on a national level, then do your job, fans and supporters. You know what I mean? So and we recognize y'all and salute y'all for, for supporting. So that doesn't go unnoticed. This is episode 206. Shout out to y'all, man. Um, again. Y'all got anybody y'all want to toss my way as far as, uh, you know, artists that y'all feel are dope or whatever that need an interview or anything like that to get their shit off. Definitely uh, holla if it's you guys again with a separate project with anybody else. Y'all more than welcome to come back on. Y'all always got a place here, man. So um, shout out to y'all. Episode 206. I am God. Clip though, man. Go check out Bloodstained Sway right now on Bandcamp. Peace. Yes, sir. Peace.